that was yeah. impressive. <laughs> How did you work that? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I think she's too tired to figure out that I've been sleeping. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna ask it the the sort of uh, random Brett WonderCon slash Comic Con all that stuff. Is there anything that you geek out over? Is there anything that you walk the convention floor and are looking to get? Uh, here, um, I just read, and it's, this is gonna sound like I'm just uh, I don't know puffing up the show and puffing up the comic book. But I just read Josh Jackson's comic book Beyond the Fringe on the airplane, and I didn't realize that he had written it. I was reading it. I got halfway through. And I said, the writing of this is incredible. Like, who wrote this? And I went and saw it was written by Josh Jackson. And I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So, if people haven't read that, um, it's one of the best comics I've read. I, I was really blown away. Really blown away. And it kind of, the story of it is um, the end of season three, going into season four, when Peter disappears, what happens to him. And, like, I wish I'd read it sooner because I would know so much more about season four now. <laughs> That's really awesome. How much do you guys enjoy playing with the uh, rotating rosters and uh, just mixing it up chemistry-wise? Uh, I love it because it never it never gets boring. I mean, this is a show that could have a format of being a procedural where you fall into the pattern of week to week. There's a case and a mystery and you go and solve it. Um, but having this grand arc of there being two universes and, and doppelgangers and different versions of yourself, you, you never get bored because you'll be playing one character and then literally in the same scene you'll go and change and play a different character and go and interact with yourself. Um, it's it's amazing and I don't I don't think there's been any other show besides maybe Battlestar or something that kind of has had that. How much do you keep inside your head and check with the other versions of yourself as you're trying to portray one singular vision? The blue verse Lincoln is pretty consistent, like I experience that week to week, and so that's always in my head and that mythology is always present. When I go to play the alt Lincoln, we're not seeing him all the time now. At first we saw him all the time, and so I knew that character very well. And now we kind of jump back and forth and we won't see him for a while, so we've had to go and have conversations about what's happening between the episodes, like what progress is that alternate universe making in getting David Robert Jones, what kinds of cases might they have had between the times we've seen them, and, um, and filling that in. And so it's challenging on one hand, but at the same time it's, it's so much fun to get to fill in those blanks and, and experience a completely different version of what is technically the same character. Who is, in your head, who is he and why is he important to the saga? Of Which Frank? one, the alt or the... I would say the, the primary. The like primary Lincoln? Um, well, Lincoln, the blue verse Lincoln, it was scary for me when that character was created because he he was he seemed to be a threat to the Peter character uh, in terms of, of taking his place in Olivia's life and on the show and solving these cases and it was really important to me that that Lincoln not alienate the audience by trying to replace Peter um, for the show by trying to replace Peter and so that character I see as a different aspect through which the audience can can view the show and um, and who he is is this person that's not as um, confident and centered and bold as the Peter Vision character and is still very much on the outside. He's kind of like he's a bit more skeptical as well. He's kind of a scully in X Files kind of thing, and he. Um, He's someone that still doesn't quite know how much of this he's supposed to believe and can't believe how deep down the rabbit hole they've gone. And I think I think primarily what he is is kind of a reminder to the audience that um, that that the fringe world has gone way beyond what is expected and um, what was initially experienced. And I think those characters like Peter and Olivia are so used to to that experience that I think the Lincoln character is a reminder, like, okay, hey, this let's let's not forget how crazy this is because it's pretty nuts. And what can you teach to, you know, Lincoln and the Olivia relationship? It seems like Olivia all of a sudden kind of realized that oh, she really loves Peter. Where, where does that take Lincoln? Lincoln's really confused because Olivia had been dosed with cortexophin and is now having the memories of an Olivia from a different timeline. So I mean, Lincoln's initial thoughts are, wait a minute, this is this is not natural. 
um, the Olivia that I knew was starting to fall in love with me and I was falling in love with her and now she's becoming a different Olivia because she was kidnapped and drugged like that's not okay you can't you can't fall in love with her because it's like date rape or something like what's going on <laughs> um, but it gets more and more confusing because that Olivia and Peter are believing that they are who they are and Lincoln has seen some pretty crazy stuff and he doesn't know what to believe anymore so he's extremely confused right now as a man essentially without a without a country and without a universe and doesn't know where he belongs. How often do you get to pitch in your own ideas for your own character? Um, we move so quickly that it's difficult to pitch your own stuff and and I, I don't really feel like I need to. I mean, like, I'll come up with something in my head, oh, it'd be so cool if we did this thing, and then I'll read the next episode and see that they did that. Um, Jeff and Joel are so tuned in to what, what the characters are doing and what the most interesting choices would probably be that they create that. So uh, I get to just go along for the ride and, and enjoy it. I'm curious a little bit about the preparation process for you breaking down scripts and stuff. Are you the type of person that, like, or are you, is it so much that you're filming, like, is it hard to get ahead of everything? You know what I mean? Like, Definitely. How much are you looking at the next script being like, am I going to play this or not play this, or what do I need to prepare for? Um, the, t the tough thing when you're preparing is I'll, I'll open up, whenever I get a new script, I'll open it up and quickly flip through to see if there's how many Lincoln acting with Lincoln scenes there are, because those are the hardest things to prepare for because normally you can show up and there's another actor to play off of and every actor on the show is so giving um, that when the camera's on you they're giving you so much to react to that you can essentially use that in no matter of what work you've done in your preparation you have this live person to bounce off of but then when you have scenes when you're acting with yourself you're you're looking at air or you're looking at a stand-in that um, that has their hair cut like you and has your clothes on so that from behind it looks like the other version of Lincoln um, but they're not doing anything and they're not giving you anything. So those scenes are incredibly challenging, not only the fact that you need to memorize more lines, but then you also need to know what am I going to be reacting to that in the moment I'm not going to be able to actually see. So you need to create all these things ahead of time, which is um, incredibly intimidating and thrilling and fun. We're getting the hook for you, so let's go ahead. <laughs>